Hey guys, so today we're just going to be doing an example around z-scores. So what we've got is we've got this question. It says John obtains a score of 56 on a test, the mean mark was 67, and the standard deviation of marks was 5.2. What's John's standardized mark? So what we want to do is we want to go through and take out our information which is going to be relevant to us. So first we want to work out what we're going to do. It says what is John's standardized mark? So we know we're going to be calculating this standardized mark which we call z-scores. And We know John obtained 56, the mean was 67 and the standard deviation was 5.2. So if we remember, the standard deviation told us the number of deviations from the mean, or the, sorry, our standardized value, our z-score, tells us the number of deviations from the mean. So our z-score is equal to the number of deviations from the mean. So, if we were to draw up these curves, we'd see that if we draw curve 1, and these will be quite sloppy, mind you, but you can do them much better at home. So, if we draw curve 1, which there it is, that's what it looks like, we know that the, the mean's going to be 67. So, the mean here will be 67, and the score John got was 56, so we know it's below 67, so it's to the left. And we know that the standard deviation, so one standard deviation away from the mean is 5.2. So that's 5.2 there. 0.2. So what we're doing is we're working out the distance between 56 and 67, which is just this um, x value of John's minus our mu which is 67, and we sometimes call mu, this can also be called x bar. So we're working out this distance, and we're just working out the number of standard deviations they are by dividing by theta, which, sorry, sigma, which is this standard deviation. So if we remember, once we've done this, we'll come out with this lovely standardized curve where we have a mean of zero, because the mean is no standard deviations away from itself. And then for every value which is a standard deviation away, we'll have, say, negative 1, negative 2 standard deviations. And we can see that the distance between 56 and 67 is 11, and our standard deviation is 5.2. So we're going to expect to see that John's mark is roughly negative 2 standard deviations away from the mean. So what we want to do is we want to go through and we want to just work out our z-score. So there's a video on this for you. And we use this formula, which I've just drawn up here. So we use this x, take our mu, and then we divide it by our sigma. So we get this x take mu divided by sigma. So we can say that for our z-score, our x value is going to be our 56. We just define our term. So our x will be 56 our mu, sorry, our mu will be equal to 67 and our sigma will be equal to 5.2 which is our standard deviation. 5.2. So what we do is we put in our values. So we get our x, which is our 56, take away our mu, which is our 67, and we divide it by our sigma, which is 5.2. So this will give us John's z-score is going to be 56 minus 67 is negative 11 divided by a standard deviation still, which is 5.2. And if we solve that out, we can see that our z-score is going to be negative 2.1154. So this is pretty consistent with what we said. We said we'd expect John to be roughly negative two standard deviations away from the mean because he underperformed, so we know we would be to the left. And it's roughly about two, so it's negative 2.1154. So we'd say that John's standardized test score, or John's z-score, his standardized mark is equal to negative 2.1154. And we could round this up to whatever we wanted to. We could round it down. Um, just be careful when you're rounding. Always round to the number of decimal places they ask you to. 
And that is how we would basically go around calculating, calculating a z-score. So I hope that's helpful for you guys, and I'll put up some more examples. Cheers.